Alright guys, Bilam here, back with a new video, and in this video I'm continuing on my series of Who Would I Vote For videos, this time talking about Big Brother US. So here I'll be running through every season of Big Brother US, at least the ones that have an actual social strategy format, and talk about who I would vote for in each of the respective final twos. Now obviously with this video I will not be talking about BB1, as obviously BB1 had a completely different format. Also I will not be talking about BBOTT, considering it's also wonky format, however I will be talking about celebrity big brother at the end of the video but with that let's start off with the main series first let's start off with big brother 2 where here we do have will versus nicole and again i said this before i still stand by it i i would vote for nicole i, I do feel like nicole had more troll over how the game played out i feel like will really messed up his game early on and while his game was mostly just survival from that point forward and he does do that well enough but and to me, I just don't find his game overly impressive in Big Brother 2. I do feel like for me, Nicole had a lot more agency in what was going on. Nicole had a lot more power during the game. And while I think Will played Nicole pretty well and also made pretty effective deals with people like Hardy and Kent to keep him safe, I think at the end of the day, that was largely due to the fact that he simply wasn't a threat. And while people can claim that, oh, he was just pretending to not be a threat and that's why he was throwing competitions the thing is the majority of those comps i don't think he would have won anyway even in competitions where he tries he fails where he was trying in comps early on and lost those he was trying in bb7 at points and lost those again i do feel like will just simply isn't a good comp competitor and really outside that again i do think nicole really ran circles around will early on in the game and had a lot more control so again i would vote nicole Next for BB3, we have Lisa versus Danielle, and this one's also super easy. I would vote Danielle. Obviously, Danielle had a lot more control through the game. She pretty much ran the majority of the game. Her and Jason were really playing both sides and doing so so effectively to where they were able to get through the game without ever being nominated. Like, I do feel like Danielle's game on this season is extremely impressive. With the biggest issue in her game is her lack of win equity however again in this situation i don't care about her win equity i'm voting based on who i think played the better game i would vote for danielle again to me lisa which is kind of aloof for a lot of the game even in the end game where she started to get under the wing of danielle and jason she was still left out of the loop at points yeah she does very good social work in getting danielle and jason to take her to three but i feel like that's pretty much all she really does that well on this season so again for me i would vote for danielle next up for bb4 and we have june versus allison i think this one's a bit tough i think this one's pretty close i do think both of them played very strong floater games playing off the middle throughout a lot of the season and I think there's really an argument for both I mean I do think June was able to get through the game a lot more unscathed she didn't have to win certain competitions to get through the game she also managed her relationship as a jury slightly better than Allison while well, Allison again did need to win certain competitions but through those competitions she did gain a lot more leverage in the game she did have more power at points however again I think I am going to go with June I think the fact that June was able to convince Allison to take her to the end even though again at the end of the day that was also in Allison's best interest I do feel like is good on June but position where she pretty much played a very similar game to Allison and they both floated independently at first and then together towards the end game but I think June was slightly more effective at navigating through the game without being targeted so because that for me I would vote for June next for B5 we have Drew versus Cowboy and again this was not particularly close I would vote for Drew not that I think Drew is the greatest player of all time by any means how are you think on this season again in comparison to Cowboy who was kind of just there for the most part again, I think Drew had a lot more of an impact on their actual success in the game he obviously won the, the competitions that they needed to navigate through the game he also had the relationship with Diane that allowed them to navigate through the end game he also just had more relationships with people on the opposing side of the house which obviously made him a likely winner coming into the final jury vote so really again I just feel like Drew played the better game all around the more active game so because I would vote for Drew next up for BB6 we have Maggie versus the vets and I would vote for Maggie now I think both games are really flawed obviously if that's more so than Maggie's but so Maggie's game in itself again I don't particularly love I mean I don't love the fact that she essentially just isolated like half the jury but I do think she does obviously some very effective work I mean utilizing Eric's vote off to capitalize on creating this cult around him and use that cult to maneuver through the game and also have her convincing Howie to take out James which is really the biggest move of the entire season that really allows the friendship to run the numbers moving forward again like Maggie 
is essentially the ringleader of our side, and through that, the vote isn't particularly close here. Even though I have faults with Maggie's game, while well, Yvette obviously just kind of followed Maggie for a lot of it, not really playing for herself. Obviously, her move at the very end to take Maggie to the end is even more indicative of that. And Yvette doesn't play an entirely bad game, but just want to get in comparison to Maggie, it's not particularly close. So I would vote for Maggie. Next for B7, we have Boogie versus Erica, and this one's also not particularly close. I would vote for Boogie. I do think Boogie, alongside Will, ran a lot of the game, and I think Boogie was actually probably the more active player than Will. He was the one that was actively going to a lot of people and trying to make deals with them. And while, again, I do think Will played the better game as a whole, I do think people like to discredit a lot of what Boogie does. And again, in terms of out of the show stuff, rightfully so. Boogie is not a good person. However, I do think just purely based on gameplay means, Boogie does play this season pretty well. And dare I say, I think even at points, is probably more of a rational strategy thinker than Will is. So again, I, I really just feel like Boogie ran most of the game. Again, they obviously messed up at the Final Four, lose control there. But again, it's not enough to really vote for Erica. I don't feel like Erica really did that much really through the first half of the game. And in the second half, she was kind of sabotaging her game, lying herself with Chill Town and then taking out Danielle for them, which is massive misstep on her. She obviously is able to convince Janelle to vote out Will at four, which is pretty good. But really, that's the only little thing that I think she does well. And even then, that was perpetuated by the mistakes that Will made himself. So again, I just think it's kind of a lackluster game there to where, again, I would vote for Boogie. Next up for BB-8, we have Dick versus Danielle, and I mean, they both suck, so I don't know. I mean, this is a situation where both of them were obviously massively benefited from America's player. Dick was literally saved by America's player, and had it not been for America's player, he would have gone home. Money also, you could argue that the reason why he put himself in that position to begin with was because of America's player, where because of America's player, he led the charge in trying to get Eric out and failed, which caused him to be targeted, only for America's player to save him at that point. So again, there are arguments we made, that and also the fact that he technically won the veto that week and only used on Danielle because she Obviously, she was his daughter. So there are arguments to be made for Dick. While Danielle, again, also didn't play particularly well. However, I feel like Danielle was a bit more of a stable presence. I and mean, while she did not come off as particularly likable most of the time, and people in the house didn't really have much respect for her, she at least didn't directly get saved by Twist. I mean, she kind of did in the sense that, again, Dick and the veto and Dick being there as her father is a bit of a twist. But again, it's a bit wonky. I mean, this entire game is just messed up. And while I do really like BB-8, I mean, that is a major issue within it. It's just how the entire season is based around its twist. But again, I think it becomes very tough to assess here. Now, straight up, in terms of my vote, I think I would probably vote Danielle just because I don't like Evil Dick and I don't support a lot of the tactics he used in the game. At the end of the day, I don't think it really matters. I think they're both pretty bad. I think Dick, again, got saved by America's player. Danielle indirectly got saved by America's player. And both greatly benefited from having a loved one in the game. So again, like it's bad on both ends. However... I just feel like I personally would have wanted Danielle to have the money more than Dick, so I would have voted Danielle. Next up for BB9, we have Adam versus Ryan, and I think this one's pretty easy. I would vote for Adam. However, I will say, though, I did end up re-watching a lot of my older Big Brother videos coming into this video, and I do think I very much overhyped Adam. Now, again, I do stand by the fact that I think Adam is probably one of the more underrated winners, really due to his endgame, which I think is pretty strong, but again, I, I do think I probably hyped him up a bit too much. But again, in terms of him versus Ryan, I do think Adam really got Ryan to do a lot of his dirty work. He really got Ryan to win these competitions for him and then make these moves. They got blood on his hands, voting out Sheila, voting out Sharon. Also blame Ryan for voting out Natalie. That's where he ended up gaining favor with Natalie. Again, he built a relationship with James on his way out. Like, I do think Adam had a lot of great jury management. Though at the same time, again, there's some misguided plays. Obviously, him not putting James on the block of the final six is pretty bad. From a pure positioning standpoint, him voting James back in at final nine is also kind of bad. Though, I guess to be fair, you could probably argue that it had put in a massive target back into the game that would be a target ahead of him but again I don't think he was thinking that way and really I think Adam's early game is pretty bad I mean well it eventually becomes a bit more stable I mean he basically comes off as this big social pariah and is almost the first out had it not been for Jacob really messing up things even more so than him well Ryan technically got voted out and came back to the game. Now, I don't think it's that egregious in the fact that he got voted out due to, again, the twist of him being linked up to Allison. They really wanted Allison gone, but he still got voted out. And really beyond that, again, I think he got very fortunate that his side won competitions where I think he was a big target on his side. He also, again, like made some pretty solid plays towards the end game. I think his jury management left a lot to be desired. And to be fair, he was kind of screwed over from the fact that he was connected to Jen, who people hated so much that they didn't want to reward Jen with the money as well. But I do still think he also does some pretty poor plays 
play towards the end game. Even though I do think his strategic thinking wasn't even that disparate from Adam. Like, realistically, I think they're probably a same caliber of player that just had Adam playing a better game towards the end. But again, I think for me, that would have been enough to give him my vote there. Thanks for BB10. We had Dan versus Memphis. And I mean, come on. <laughs> Obviously, I'm voting Dan. I mean, it's a pretty similar situation to BB9. Just, I think Dan's a much better player than Adam, obviously. Where again, I think Dan really allowed Memphis to do a lot of his dirty work, allowed him to vote out these figures that Dan knew would cause Memphis to burn jury votes, really likes of Jerry and Keisha. He just in general had better relationships. He does constantly throw Memphis under the bus. Now outside that, I do think their games are relatively similar for a lot of the back half of the game. Obviously, they are working together. They are working together as the Renegades. A lot of the plans they end up executing are plans that they agreed upon with each other. Though again, I just feel like Dan gets Memphis to do things that are not in his best interest. And just in general, just continuously undercuts Memphis towards the end game. Through all their games are similar. And it's really due to that, that I would vote for Dan at the end here. Next up for BB11. This one's a bit more difficult. We have Jordan versus Natalie. And this is difficult because I think they both suck. And I don't really want to vote for either of them. However, I do think I would vote for Natalie. I mean, I think Jordan is someone that obviously was greatly benefited by the coup d'etat. And even despite that, still loses control by the end and had to win final HOH. And also spent a lot of the early game on the outs. While Natalie was someone that was in the majority for most of the game. The only time she loses control is due to the coup d'etat and was able to recover from that within the next couple weeks. Though, it's still Natalie, who I don't think is that good of a player. I think she's someone that really lied unnecessarily through the game and had no social capital due to that. She seemed to just actively burn jury votes for no real reason and thought extremely highly of her game to where, again, it would have bothered me to vote for Natalie. Though I think in this instance, against against Jordan, it's like, I gotta vote for Natalie. But I think I would have probably voted for most other competent players over Natalie in this situation. Next up for BB12, we have Hayden versus Lane. And here, again, kind of close in the fact that they were obviously both in the brigade. However, I do think I would vote for Hayden. While I don't think Lane plays an entirely bad game, I think Lane was probably the person that was the most willing to cut members of the brigade. I do think he wanted to go to the end with Brittany, though even then was that even that good of a plan? Considering I think he has a better chance against Enzo. While Hayden played a much more stable game, I think Hayden had more awareness of his game as a whole. Now he does barely win against Lane when he would have had a much easier time against Enzo, but still, I, I feel like Hayden was a lot more integral to how the game played out. I think he was the main driver in the map blind side. It really picked up the pieces from there and pulling in Brendan. It really benefited the most from that and like pulling in Brendan as well. And yeah, for me, I think there's technically an argument for the both of them. However, I do think I would slightly lean towards Hayden with him feeling like the more active player to me. Next up for BB13, we have Rachel versus Portia. And this one's brutal because again, I also don't think either of them are particularly great. Now, I love Rachel as a character. However, obviously as a player on this season, it's very wonky. She was definitely benefited from the wonky stuff happening at final six. She also got very benefit from the fact that Lawan volunteered to quit the game due to the announcement of the twist earlier in the week. Again, like there are wonky things with Rachel's game on this season, but also I don't think Portia played that good of a game either. I think Portia didn't really know what was going on for a lot of the early game. And once she finally decides to have agency in her game with that agency, she flips to the minority to where they're able to comp out for a while. So at least there's that. And obviously Portia does win a lot of end game comps. But again, I don't particularly think find Porsche's game that good either. And again, this is not one of those instances like Dick or Danielle to me. I don't think either of them played particularly good games. So in this instance, just screw it. I'm going to vote for the person who I would rather see win. And that person is Rachel Riley. To where while Porsche again would technically be higher ranked probably on a ranking, it would just be barely so. It's where again, I'm willing to vote for Rachel in this instance. Next up for B14, we have Ian versus Dan, and this one's super easy. I would vote for Dan. And I'll be honest, over time, my opinion of Ian's game has significantly dropped. I think Ian is a player that, to be honest, was kind of bad on BB14 and kind of just wins due to comp results and Dan souring a lot of his jury chances by the end and also Dan having the unfortunate status of being a former winner and being a former player that people didn't want to reward with another win like I, I really don't feel like Ian does much well really at all on this season outside of winning comps and even then gets very fortunate in certain twists that happen where obviously I think Dan really dominates a lot of the end game I mean, while you can argue obviously the fact that he was benefited from being a coach that was added in late he also ends up having the ramifications of that and the fact that again people don't want to re reward a coach with the win again, and while again like yeah he does burn jury votes in the end game it also doesn't really matter as he, i don't think he was getting a lot of those votes anyway but i think him in that position he might as well just play as hard as he can and i think he navigates through the game very impressively obviously dan's funeral still an incredible move his blind sides of frank and 
Shane are still really strong moves as well. So again, I just think Dan played a much better game all around because I, I would vote for him here. Next up for B15, we have Andy versus Gina Marie. And what do you think? Like, I legitimately can't even think of a single reason why I would ever vote for Gina Marie in this instance. Well, Andy obviously played a very, very impressive game. Being able to play off of really everybody extremely well. Being in everyone's good graces. Forming the exterminators in the end game and really running the show from that point forward. Using the likes of Amanda, Helen, and Alyssa as targets in front of him. Again, a lot of really impressive work from Andy. It's not even close here. Next up for BB16, we have Derek versus Cody, and also not particularly close, I'd vote for Derek. Now, I don't think Cody plays a bad game on this season. I've said this before that I think Cody would have also been an extremely impressive winner had he won this season. But I do think Derek did better. I mean, Derek had more individual relationships in the game. I feel like Derek did a lot more impressive work with a lot of the people that were in the end game. Obviously, having final twos with both Cody and Victoria. He had Caleb wanting to take him to the end. He had a very close relationship with Frankie, though, to be fair, some of that was due to Team America. But still, I mean, like, by the time of the final five, he was pretty well insulated to where he's almost guaranteed final two, if not at worst, final three, with him pretty much beating everybody by that point. And even before that point at the final five, he's still relatively safe where even if he ended up on the block the person who he was next to would more than likely go home really just again Derek plays one of the most dominant games in big brother history well cody again plays right next to him again cody's right there through a lot of the things that Derek is doing now again i think Derek was overall better positioned in the game than cody had better relationships with the likes of a caleb and a frankie than cody had a better relationship with victoria and again that's kind of the reason why i would vote for Derek is because i do think Derek which is all around better position, though I don't think Cody would have been a bad winner either. Again, I think both of these options are pretty strong. However, again, I would end up voting for Derek. Next up would be 17. We have Steve versus Liz. And I remember there was a point where I would have voted for Liz, which it's funny in retrospect because now I'm pretty solid. I would vote for Steve. It's not even close. I, I think Steve, again, while I still have faults with certain aspects of his game, I think really executes his plan from beginning to end pretty flawlessly. Where again, like the strategy he ends up using to win this season is one that he pretty much detailed in his pregame press. He wanted to put himself actively on the bottom of the majority alliance and through that be safe while the two sides took shots at each other and then end up comping out at the very end and while also creating final two with the person at the top of the packing order to where he would be taken to the end of the game where he would eventually cut them again he literally executed that strategy to a t which obviously just shows a lot of awareness in steve's game I and mean, to me it's a pretty solid like middle tier big brother game it was in the majority for most of the game i will say there are individual points where again he could have potentially been in danger had not been for certain comp results but i think as a whole steve played a very consistent game one that had him knowing pretty much exactly what he was doing well liz i think was just kind of there it was a pretty integral piece in the game the fact that she was very close to austin and julia who were kind of keeping them together but also i feel like she did very little in the game actively and was just there kind of writing it out while the likes of like vanessa and steve are just kind of playing around her so again i feel like at the end of the day i would vote for steve here next up for bb18 we have nicole versus paul and you know i remember at the time all the controversy that there was over paul losing this final two situation but again i would vote nicole and i don't think it's particularly close i don't think paul played that great of a game on bb18 i think there are points where they're playing a pretty decent game i think there's points where they end up picking up the game they end up making pretty good swings in the game i mean the fact that paul's able to organize the votes against paulie is pretty impressive the fact that paul's able to work with nicole and Corey towards the end game is pretty good the fact that paul's able to integrate themselves after losing all their allies and working alongside paulie during an early game is pretty impressive as well like there are good things within paul's game however every time there's something good there's also something bad in the sense that they had some pretty poor jury management at points. They were just all around a pretty loud confrontational figure to where they became a target, even to where they just put an even target on their back. They massively benefited from the fact that Victor kept on coming back into the game, which gave them another shield to utilize in the game. Also a loyal number. Well, Nicole, again, I think just Nicole plays a pretty solid all around game. I mean, I think she is in the majority for most of the game. The only point where she loses some control is, the, is when Polly goes downhill, but even then is able to recover pretty quickly. She's able to convince Natalie and Michelle to go out after Paul and Victor, which is a very impressive move there. Probably really the game winning move for her, especially considering she's later able to pick up Paul and Victor as a number immediately afterwards, really just fracturing that newfound majority. She has Corey as a shield for her in the end game and has Corey campaigning for her, actively sending him to the jury on what exactly to say to the jurors. I think there's a lot to like with Nicole's game. While obviously people will criticize the fact that, oh, she was just playing for the guys and how all she did is hang out with Corey, I, I do feel like that's not 
fully true. I, I don't feel like that's actually the case. I do think Nicole played a very strong game, especially towards the end of the game, her just floating between all the sides. So because of that for me, I would vote for Nicole. Next up for BB19, Josh versus Paul. And this is one of these instances where I think I would want Josh to win. I was very happy when Josh won BB19. I thought it was a fun TV moment, but also a really great downfall for Paul. However, in this instance, I would vote for Paul. I do think Paul played one of the most dominant games we had ever seen in Big Brother. And again, for me to not vote for that would obviously be against my overall game philosophy or again in these other instances like dick and danielle or rachel and portia it's like those are instances where i feel like it's so close that it doesn't really matter so because that i'll probably vote for who i just want to win more this is an instance where again like it's a pretty wide gap obviously paul just dominated the game to a degree that we rarely see in big brother now part of that was due to the fact that they were benefited a lot by twists but even then extremely dominant game and Josh, I, I think Josh probably plays a little bit of an underrated game. And where I, I do think he was positioning his end game a lot more actively than people give him credit for. But at the same time, again, it's not Paul's game. I, I think Paul really runs this game from beginning to end because I would vote for Paul. Next up, BB20, we got Casey versus Tyler. And obviously, I vote for Tyler. And Tyler is the much more active player. I mean, he obviously took his step off the gas at the very end, which is extremely frustrating that he had the win in his hands and simply just didn't seal it up. Instead, went to the end game against pretty much the two biggest jury threats in JC and Casey, which is kind of insane when you think about it. When he had so many options out there. But oh yeah, like to me, I just feel like Casey he was just kind of there for a lot of the season. I mean, she was working alongside Tyler, but really Tyler was just telling Casey what to do most of the time. Like even in the individual relationships that Casey ended up making on the season, a lot of those were due to the fact that Tyler told her to make those relationships, told her to bond with Sam, told her to bond with Bailey. Like those weren't relationships that Casey like actively sought out. Like she had to be prompted into doing so. And again, comparing that to Tyler, who does so much impressive work in the early game, I mean, sets up this power structure where he could literally just did nothing for like the back half of the game and was still able to easily coast to the very end. All that being due to the impressive work he did early in the game. Again, him flipping over Caitlyn to take out Steve, which is still an insane move. Him convincing Caitlyn to take out Swaggy, also an insane move. Despite that still being looked at as someone that was in the middle, not even being looked at as part of the level six side, even though he was the main orchestrator of that side. So again, for me, it's not particularly close here. I would easily vote for Tyler. Next up for BB21, which I believe is the first new season to be talking about since the last time I did this video. So that's something, but here we have Jackson versus Holly. And I think this is pretty tough mainly because I do think Holly played a better first half of the game for sure. And really, I feel like both of their back half of the games were pretty rocky. I mean, it was very reliant on comp wins. That's where obviously they end up succeeding largely due to Jackson's comp wins. But through that, I think it makes it tough to assess here where I think Jackson was a more active player and did a lot more in the end game that got them to the very end, especially the final five move, obviously, and getting Cliff and Nicole to vote out Tommy over Holly. But again, his overall game is just so rocky. While I feel like Holly's early game was a lot more stable than Jackson's game really throughout the entirety of it. But also I feel like she kind of gave up at the end game she didn't really try that hard by the time of the end game where it very much just felt like she was just doing whatever jackson was doing and just letting jackson take the charge and her not really doing much to really help them progress through the game where again this is like an instance where i think i would really want to vote for holly but it feels like her end game really just did not give me a reason to vote for her with jackson really just doing a lot of the work for them in the back half of the game which again while that work might have been sloppy at points i feel like it's still what actually got them to the end. So I think here I would begrudgingly end up voting for Jackson. Next up for BB22, we have Cody versus Enzo. And this is not that close, even though, again, I think both play pretty good games, but I would obviously vote for Cody. I think Cody dominated the game from beginning to end in a way that made the game extremely boring. But again, just the pure dominance of his game is pretty unprecedented in Big Brother. Now, I think there is an argument to be made about Enzo and the fact that Enzo was safer throughout most of the game. I mean, Enzo was probably the best position player throughout most of the game, where Cody needed specific people out at specific points, and even then needed the Final Four veto, or at least needed Christmas not to win it. So again, his game is definitely rocky at points, but I just feel like overall, the amount of control he has over the game is definitely more impressive than that of Enzo's, even though Enzo was better positioned, so again, I would vote for Cody. 
Next for BB23, we have Xavier versus Big D, and begrudgingly, I would vote for Xavier. Where I've said this in the past, I do not think Xavier played the greatest game. I think it's a shame that the likes of Kylan, Hannah, or Tiffany did not get towards the end game. I would much rather vote for any of those three over Xavier, where I feel like Xavier just completely lucks his way into his win. But again, against Big D, it's like, who else am I voting for here? But again, against Big D, I'm not voting for Big D, so I mean, come on. I have the vote for Xavier, but I don't really want to. Again, I think Xavier really just benefited off the fact that there was a cookout in a position where if it was not for a cookout, I think he would have been taken out much earlier in the game. Also in a position where the likes of Tiffany, Kylan, and Hannah had much better positions in the game. Tiffany essentially being in this position to completely run the entire game and gave that up for the cookout. And while I guess you can credit Xavier for making sure the cookout went through, as he was obviously the person that benefited the most from it, I do feel like as a whole, I think he did the least amount of work out of the competent players within the cookout to make the cookout successful, which, which makes it frustrating that he's the one that got to the end. But again, in this instance, obviously I would vote for him over Big D. Next for BB24, we have Taylor versus Monty. And this one's a bit tough because obviously I wouldn't want Taylor to win. I think Taylor has a much better storyline. He's a much more likable winner. But I do feel like gameplay wise, I do struggle with this decision because I do think Monty played the better game. And I don't even think it's really that close. I mean, Taylor obviously got voted out week one, had to be saved by a twist, slash also Paloma quitting the game, which obviously, yeah, she got mistreated week one, and that's terrible, and I don't think that happens in most seasons, but it still happened, and it's still a thing I have to factor into her game. And while she was able to recover from that really impressively, I still think she had some faulty points throughout the game. I think there's points where her reads were completely off, her HOH was abysmal. Even in her end game, she was control of Brittany. Like, I think there are things to call out with Taylor's game, mixing in the fact that she also also got voted out of the game. Well, Monty, again, I think had a lack of awareness of Taylor's game and the fact that he obviously assumed that he would have a much easier time in beating Taylor than Turner, which again might have some undertones to that, but obviously he was wrong there. But I think outside of that, again, he played a very solid game. Now, one that also I think was benefited from the fact that the Kyle situation happened where it had not been for that, he more than likely goes home during Kyle's eviction week. And even beyond that, was kind of a big target in the game that was kind of being saved by the fact that his side either won competitions or Michael just decided to save him for a little bit later. But again, I do think his end game stretch is pretty strong outside of obviously the lack of awareness of Taylor's game. But again, I do think Monty's early game is very strong where he was very well positioned for the first couple weeks. He obviously is one of the major instigators of the leftovers forming much more so than Taylor's involvement in that. And obviously he has a lot of control over the end game though obviously he controls it in a faulty way. But to me, again, like I just feel like even though I would want Taylor to win, I do feel like the gap in between gameplay here is a bit too much to wear. I think I would begrudgingly vote for Monty, but again, Taylor winning is obviously a satisfying outcome. And now for the latest main season of the show, we got BB25. We got Jag versus Matt. And I mean, what do you think? I mean, if you know my opinions on the game, obviously I'm voting for Matt over Jag. Again, Jag got voted out, came back to the game. Even outside that, I've criticized this game constantly about me just not thinking he played a good game at all. Well, again, I think Matt played a mostly impressive game. Yes, there are flaws here and there, but again, he played a game that had him pegged as the front runner for most of it and still was not targeted and was very well positioned early on in the game, was right in the center of a lot of what was going on during Cerise's tenure in the game. And then after that, obviously had his bond with Jag that had them really running a lot of the post-merge portion of the game. Matt was better positioned than Jag the entirety of that time. Matt also, again, convinced Jag to take out Cameron. Uh, Matt had the better relationship with Bowie that added Bowie to their alliance. And he also has Jag somehow still taking him to the end, despite the fact that Jag knows he's going to lose to him, only for him to not lose. But either way, I would vote for Matt. It's not particularly close. Now of the main season's out of the way, let's start talking about Celebrity Big Brother. We got Celebrity Big Brother 1. We have Marissa versus Ross. And I would vote for Ross here. It's not particularly close. I think Marissa really just stumbled her way through the game. And while I think early on she was playing okay for the first couple weeks, I think by the time the end of the game, she's kind of just playing for Ross, wanted Ross to win, actively took Ross to the end because she thought Ross would win. Well, Ross was really just playing circles around most people and obviously had most of the jury upset at him the way they didn't want to reward him with the win. But I still think in terms of positioning through the game, I think he plays very impressively. So again, I would vote for Ross. From Slayer Bird 2, we have a pretty tough decision here in Tamar versus Ricky. And again, I think this one's pretty close in the fact that I think Tamar, while... 
having some pretty poor journey management at points and also some pretty poor social play at points. I think positions herself in the game pretty well to where I don't think there was really any point where Tamar was in serious danger of going home, but also was kind of on the bottom of the majority alliance that she was working with. But I feel like Ricky was towards the top of that alliance. I think Ricky more actively maneuvered through the game, but also had a much faultier game. Obviously, did not have much respect from the jury. And in the end game, again, makes a very misguided decision in taking Tamar to the end. Mind you, I think he would have lost to anybody anyway. But still, I think Tamar was definitely a harder person to beat than someone like a Lolo. And it just feels like he betrayed Lolo for like no real reason there. But again, I do think at the end of the day, I think I would vote for Ricky. I don't think either of them played particularly great games, but I just think in terms of overall agency in their game, I think Ricky had a bit more of it. So that's why I would vote for Ricky. And then we get the Celebrity Big Brother 3, where here we have Misha versus Todrick. And I guess I'm voting Todrick. Now again, I know a lot of people are obviously upset at all the comments that Todrick made through the season would not really respect him and not really want to vote for him and that's what happened on the actual season however i do think for me i do feel like todrick played circles around misha for most of the season i think misha just got very benefited from the fact that her opponent was much more hated than her but todrick had way more connections in the house todrick was the much more strategic player of the bunch and while obviously todrick's game was benefited from misha's comp wins i feel like todrick really just ran a lot of this season and while it may be in a bit of an icky way i still feel like i would end up voting for him in this instance but there we go. I mean, that is my who would I vote for for Big Brother US, which I believe is the last of these that I was planning on doing. So again, I'll probably redo these in five years if I'm still doing YouTube by that point. But still, I do have more videos I'm planning on redoing for the five year anniversary of the channel. So stay tuned for more of those. And obviously just the typical content you can expect from the channel. But for now, that is the video. Thank you for watching.